Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this edition of SRE Practitioner Series. I'm your host, Suresh B GP, and I'm glad to um, welcome you all to the episode number 10. Today, I have an esteemed guest and a good friend, Mr. Sai Prakash, who is the Director of Consulting at CGI. Sai Prakash has extensive experience of over two decades in the IT industry, spanning across multiple roles and business domains. Sai is a certified SRE practitioner and is passionate to make things better. With a motto to maximize IT for business and support, clients to succeed in their transformation journey, he has been executing several high value projects across business domains. Thank you so much, Sai, for joining us in this edition of uh, SRE Practitioner Series. I hope you're doing good and staying safe. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Suresh, and uh, thanks for that introduction as well. Yes, doing safe, uh, and hope you are doing good as well. Yeah, thank you very much. So let's get this kick started, um, Sai. The first one is how relevant is SRE in today's IT's world? You know, and you have been in this space for over two decades. So is this a more of a buzzword, or is it a hype, or a reality? How do you think that SRE is playing a role in this IT today? Well, I think uh, at, uh, we do have to acknowledge that at some times, SRE is treated more as a buzzword. Uh, but I think that's where the the actual scenario changes. So today we are in a uh, situation where the uh, IT landscape is changing really fast. The business landscape is changing very fast. Uh, the businesses are looking to evolve themselves almost every other day. You know, trying to offer new things, how, how they can give more value to the clients, to the use, to the end clients, to the users, to their community. And uh, amongst all of these things, uh, uh, I think uh, SRA does play a major role. But the caveat that we will need to understand is um, in, in today's fast changing uh, pace, the IT world, see, Agile and DevOps are getting adopted and adapted at a at a much uh, mature way. But um, I think the, the underlying uh, reason for why we are doing this, it's the users. And the users are going to um, use these uh, enterprise applications, the features that we are releasing on the production systems. Right. And uh, that's the missing link, I think, uh, the, which is where SRE comes in. And, and that's why I said SRE is in a danger of getting a password, but it actually is not. It, it plays a really key role in ensuring that the users for whom we are developing these features get to use it on a consistent and uh, on, on a continual basis. Right. So it's basically the reliability in the production that is becoming a big game changer. Uh, Absolutely. For all clients. Absolutely. I mean, you can have all shiny new features being brought every yes. now and then. Yes. But my system yes. has got unplanned outages that really uh, exactly. become a very experience. Right? Well, uh, it's not even just the outages. The, uh, the, uh, that's another part you, you uh, brought a good point. It's not that it's only just outages or something. No, I'm um, executing a transaction. And uh, usually I know that, yes, it's going to take uh, one second at a max. I mean, including when I click, I just get a response. And uh, if I'm getting a res if I do not get a response even after five seconds, that, that as a user I start feeling, hey, is there something wrong? And I keep, you know, retrying, retrying. Right. Now this is where the the user's experience goes bad. Is are we in an outage? Technically, no, we are not. But this is where the reliability of the system actually comes in. And I'm sure all of us have got one or two such experiences where we feel, oh man, what's happening? Yeah. yeah. No, no, absolutely, and and. We talk about slowness is the new low, right? At the end yes. of the day, it is all about people expecting 24 cross 7, 365 days, an uninterrupted uh, level of service to, to make Absolutely. it. Right? Absolutely. So let's get to the next question. In terms of what are the challenges in general? Because you come from an IT service provider organization. In the context of SRE, what are some of these challenges in general faced by IT service providers? Uh, I think the first um, point that comes to my mind uh, when, when we come to uh, the implementation of site reliability engineering or utilizing the benefits of site reliability engineering in any, any enterprises 
is actually um, a understanding of course but more than that i think it's the intent of implementing it right. so be it the enterprise or a service provider or the entire uh, it ecosystem i think the that particular intent of okay let us focus on the reliability let us focus on ensuring that the users are going to get 100% of what we intend to get to that is one key thing which i feel sometimes people are uh, missing out and this is where again i think it, you know to the earlier question we talked about people people sometimes i see a danger that they treat this more as a buzzword and uh, sometimes they uh, people think that this is an additional thing oh i am already doing so many things now this new sre has come i need to work on top of it my efforts are going to go high uh, or or sometimes we may have an it ecosystem which is not um, uh, mature enough in terms of the tooling so the, there are multiple challenges in terms of the intent uh, from the enterprises the it ecosystem in general uh, the understanding uh, of the of the people when it comes to the actual implementation uh, the processes and the tools the underlying processes and the tools uh, which are not uh, mature or supportive enough to to properly get implemented and uh, i think the most important thing a proper uh, coaching this is this is definitely required uh, when we get to implementing sre so i i think i think these are uh, some three or four uh, important challenges uh, when it comes to implementing and and these are the things which i see more as gaps uh, where it enterprises themselves as well as the service providers who are extending the services to the enterprises are not deriving the the power of site reliability engineering and ensuring that the clients are getting the best value for their uh, you know usage or whatever. right so you made a very interesting point of uh, needing of a coach right you know, many a times people think that we will do it everything from my own i mean of course everybody has the experience to do it but wouldn't that be uh, important that you get a jump start with someone who's already done this in several implementations to gain that perspective so that you can get the wisdom of production in real ground absolutely absolutely and, and i think it is not just so when we are talking about a coach uh, it's not just in the sense or the context of sre just itself sure. but yes it's it's like there is so much of wealth of knowledge spread across uh, why should we make use of it why should we have to reinvent the wheel and uh, undergo all of those things all by ourselves um, slow down our journey uh, and and sometimes risk the derailment of uh, all of those things so this is where a coach actually comes into a, a, into picture to guide the um, enterprise or, or this particular sr implementation on a right track that's that's absolutely important sure and so what uh, Uh, agile coach i mean why it, agile is there and and many organizations are doing good still we have agile coach why it's because people the the it industry understands the significance of a coach right in uh, giving it a right direction and the right inputs absolutely that's i think spot on let's go to the specific challenges you have been in your sre journey for quite some time now what are some of the specific challenges you have faced and how did you go about implementing sre because again the way you look at it uh, implementation of sre in an it service provider or a managed service provider context is very different from a retail company or a financial services institution so how did you go about doing that what was the driver to do this one so give us a little bit of background on that sure and uh, this this is a very interesting journey uh, which i personally experienced um, so it started with the, that buzzword sre so it it started kicking in okay what exactly is that okay, let me learn about it understand what's it uh, what it is about and uh, sure enough i was uh, very much interested in it because um, this is about support extending services to the clients and uh, that that's the business i am into and my my team uh, does that so it made a natural sense for me to look into uh, site reliability engineering and how we can leverage the power of it i mean that that became a starting point for me uh, let's say 22 uh, to two, two and a half uh, years ago uh, but to the specific challenges that we um, encountered during this journey was uh, first of all defining the problem statement itself so why why sre 
if right. i have to ask a uh, you know take this proposal to my bosses or to my clients why do we need a sari so that to so defining that problem statement becomes an absolute input and that takes a lot of uh, brainstorming understanding of our business and and lot of that stuff and obviously it's an iterative process that we will need to so uh, problem definition becomes the a, a very important aspect that was a key um, learning for me and and also a challenge for me uh, in terms of defining this the second thing was uh, uh, even experimentation see the, when we started off we did not have any template or uh, any um, uh, let's say a, a, a experience within our organization where things can be uh, set rolled out just like that uh, so that uh, it it required uh, defining what we want to solve how is it that we are going to do what will be the investments that we'll have to make both in terms of the people money time uh, all of these aspects started coming in how is it that we are going to take to the clients themselves so uh, uh, defining the problem statement uh, uh, coming up with the implementation roadmap uh determining the success measures you see this is another important item which of, of course is linked with the first one where what is the problem statement right. what are the success criteria what are the measures so these these became uh, i would say very uh, important aspects or challenges which i had to uh, uh, work through along with my colleagues when we were uh, defining it and uh, more importantly i think when when we do some sort of an experimentation which in some, in some ways it was uh, sustainability uh, becomes another uh, uh, important aspect if we are not able to demonstrate the results that we start with uh, sustainability becomes another challenge and of course it, for the past i i would say one and a half uh, plus years uh, you know situation got compounded with attrition so anything that you do it just you take one you put one step forward and two steps back Right. Uh, but I would say I was uh, absolutely, absolutely fortunate uh, uh, with, with uh, because my management was absolutely supportive. Um, they they definitely saw a value in this and said, yes, we need to put the right investments. Uh, how is it uh, that we are going to uh, start this journey? And also, uh, and and uh, I would say thanks to you uh, for uh, you know giving that introduction of uh, SRE, what it is. And uh, we work together, and that's where we we define the what will be our measures of success. But more importantly, where we are. So um, the um, the top solutions, I would say, definitely helped us in coming up with that uh, measurements of as is situation. So okay, today we are here. We want to move here tomorrow or in the next whatever time frame. What will be the steps that we will need to take? So that roadmap uh, and the measures these became uh, absolutely uh, i would say critical factors in in uh, uh, getting our journey going and achieving success started uh, getting results excellent and also i want to kind of highlight the leadership team and the management investing a lot of enablement so how do you think you know instead of a traditional two days you did a three day program uh, bringing in all those people so how do you really see the value of the enablement part because you you approached a very different approach rather than the standard of the shelf one because you had a lot of thought process to it but i'm i'm, I'm quite keen because a lot of people who are embarking on the sre journey they don't know where to start with so can you just talk a little bit about the enablement particularly when you talk about people who are going to drive this transformation forming that core how did we how did you make this a reality right from the concept to to the actual reality how did you go about it i think the the key thing is um, knowledge is there, uh, but how how can we apply the knowledge, that application? If we get a taste of that application, then our then there is no um, limit to the way that we can imagine and come up with newer ways of thinking. Uh, so this is where when we worked on the curriculum, yes, there was a, there is a two day curriculum. Yes, we know we are going to cover. X, Y, Z, the introduction of SRA and whatnot, all the concepts, how we can implement it and all. But unless and until uh, someone experiences that real time while uh, you know, converting, absorbing the concept and implementing it right away into how it actually looks on the field, 
that became a game, uh, game changer, I would say, at least in my opinion, and which is where that three-day program where we, we had that excellent game. You know, people immediately started thinking through, uh, and, and my uh, uh, colleagues who, and including myself, we all underwent that training. So uh, the moment we said, yeah, we have to focus on toil items. So that, that simulation game that we were having, okay, yes, I do understand. It's not that uh, uh, toil is a new concept for everybody. No, people do understand that I need to become efficient. But how am I uh, actually implementing it? How am I balancing it with the other aspect of introducing new features, introducing right. automation? Where am I going to focus on? So today, I think that's the key part which people, all the people that are um, uh, you know, with the goal of uh, uh, providing value to the clients, this becomes an important aspect. Yes, they have to use my IT system. So how? It's, it's, uh, this yeah, that's a perfect one because you're talking about the DTX simulation that has actually combined, but you also are very clear. One of the things I like about how you approached was you were focused on outcomes, right? It's not a tick in the box that you went about yeah. saying that we want to train these people on SRE foundation or SRE practitioner because you had a goal in mind, you know? Like what yeah. Stephen Covey says, start with an end in mind. So when you yes. started with uh, what outcome, you're very specific to look at how do we make that, uh, and this is a virtual setup, having people from different yep. uh, locations, how do you make that really valuable for them to apply what they learned in the, in the part? So for people, DTX simulation is a game where we apply some of the principles over four quarters and they experience agile DevOps SRE on, on runtime. So it's a great way to combine your uh, theory with actual practice. So that made it really worthwhile. Now, one of the questions that I want to ask uh, Sai is, many people think that if you want to start SRE, you should have a mature DevOps environment. So is that a prerequisite? What has been your experience? Because you do a lot of things around agile DevOps. What do you think, uh, is, it a, is it a prerequisite? Uh, what would be some of your insights on that? I would say, um, so we all know um, SRE is actually implemented from DevOps. I mean, it implements DevOps. So yes, having a mature uh, a DevOps environment is going to give us that excellent benefits and that excellent results. Uh, but I wouldn't say that uh, a mature DevOps environment is mandatory to uh, to get going or start the SRE journey. Reason being, see what SRE talks about are also, I mean, many of those principles, uh, you uh, be it the toil, be it defining, uh, aligning with the business. I, I think the service level, the concept of service level objectives and the service level indicators, they are really, really powerful. And uh, those are the ones which connect a support person or an IT support. Yeah, I will, I will use the word IT support. To that to the business and this is a this is a very key key aspect i would say otherwise people do miss out on on those uh, important link and they do not know whom why what is the purpose that purpose sure. gets established so i think many of these principles uh, even though we do not have a mature devops environment uh, let's say it's evolving or sometimes it may not even be there it's uh, that's going to help uh, a lot uh, uh, i would say uh, in, in the, the sre journey Right. So one of the other things that I see in terms of uh, implementation, not every company has got everything on cloud. So do you still think that SRE will be still applicable in legacy environment and, and monolithic applications? Or is it something that we can only start SRE when we all move towards cloud? I mean, there's some, some perception exists. Right. I do understand. And that, that's one of the... Uh... I would say uh, misconceptions. Right. So the concepts of SRE are something at, at the at the core of it. At least the way I look at uh, SRE is not something that uh, preaches any tools. SRE is not something that preaches about any one particular process or, or methodology to be implemented. What SRE preaches is we have to deliver value to our clients to the end users. And SRE preaches that the production systems have to be reliable for the end users. And yes, there are guidelines that SRE preaches. So I would uh, definitely say that uh, having a cloud environment, having the DevOps, uh, mature tools, everything, they are going to, um, I would say, accelerate and give the fantastic results. But if you do not have, you can still go ahead and implement SRE. Absolutely. It's, 
it is going to be uh, uh, i would say a scale down or a um, uh, let me know what's the right word a customized implementation that sure. we will have to do but right yes it's very much possible excellent so our final question would be uh, a lot of people are embarking on an sre journey i know you, you we have been talking about sre is a marathon and it takes time and effort so for someone who is trying to get inside sre but is really worried you know whether this will work or not um, so what do you suggest for people um, as an individual as an organizations going into sre journey where do you think uh, they should focus their efforts or what are some of the do's and don'ts from your practical experience that you can share with the community so uh, the first thing that i would uh, suggest when someone is embarking on sre journey is uh, absolutely to understand the purpose this is this is really important uh why is it that we want to do um do we want to uh, transform our services uh, if so why so that purpose for uh, uh, any any organization be it an enterprise be it a service provider this holds true and once we uh, agree upon the purpose uh, are we uh, the, the another thing that we everyone will need to be very uh, careful and uh, be very cognizant about is it's not about implementing any tool sets sri right. is not about implementing tool sets so that that has to be really clear so uh, a def- um, understand why you want to do so define your purpose uh, b what is the uh, outcome that you would be achieving over a period of time and and then have shorter goals at the end of the 3 months 6 months 9 months 1 year i think the the quarterly goals are really going to help so define what is it that we want to uh, achieve over a, over a period of this time um i would say that definition itself should become a implementation road map right for the organization or for that it ecosystem so right. okay this is how we are going to uh, achieve and results then uh, identifying the right people giving them the right training and uh this is a continual uh, approach where uh, at every uh, designated interval and for some organizations if it's a very fast uh, paced environment it can be two weeks but if it's a, a moderate where uh, changes are happening every month please keep looking at or retrospective please conduct the retrospectives of uh, what went correct what did not go right that the way that we wanted what can be additional things that we can introduce what were the learnings and keep Uh, doing the course correction and keep moving and i am I, i mean i think it is as much as we do um, the agile and devops it's it's just the same thing with a with a focus on uh, reliability of the production systems that's a key thing that we need to do excellent excellent conversation sai i think we i know that our viewers would have enjoyed the the last 20 minute conversations on sre so if someone wants to reach out to you and have a conversation where they where can they reach out to you what's the best place to reach out to them well i would say um, my they can connect me uh, on linkedin uh, right. so i can i can definitely help and then um, um, i'm really fortunate to have uh, some of my colleagues uh, who are who are really brilliant and uh, help and, and and we as an organization are also evolving on our practices uh, getting mature and uh, we are seeing some uh, good results uh that we are really feeling proud about as as we are implementing through the months uh, so yes absolutely i will be glad to share our knowledge and expertise thank you so much sai prakash for joining us for the episode number 10 and viewers you would have enjoyed you see the passion of uh, implementing sri over a period of 2 years it's going to be a marathon but i hope uh, this valuable insights will help you to navigate through the journey so stay connected with sai on linkedin and uh, i'll look forward to seeing you all in our next episode of the sri practitioner series until then everybody thank you so much and stay safe thank you again thank you bye